It was, my project was a, uh, uh, one of a, a series of 11 short films that I did uh, for a artist residency program at the Echo Park Film Center in uh, September of 2011. And, uh, That's where I started too, except a year and a thing. half later. In, but in what way? So then be, going beyond that is like, how did you each decide to investigate this particular thing at that time? Um, I'm really interested in uh, hu how humans interact with the non-human environment and uh, landscape, and um, especially how in Los Angeles we, we keep nature and people at some safe distance, I feel, and, and, uh, and so I, um, I wanted to explore that idea in, in different ways. Um, and so in this, in this piece I was interested in how uh, we, we select um, ways of organizing space and naming space uh, according to the things that, that we erased from the landscape to make it so that we can build on it and build the things that, that we want to live in, but we want reminders of of these other uh, things, so we can watch them on TV, or we can plant them in a thing in our window, or we can look at our street signs, and, and now we have uh, nature around us at this in, in a, a safe, controlled way. Is that really how some of these places got their names? Was like, oh, there was a flower here, so let me just destroy it and then put a street called uh, Flower. I, I street. don't, I don't know that it was that it was. Uh, right on that place, but, uh, but come on, I mean, look around Los Angeles, look at our river, look at hilltops that have been taken off to, to build buildings. I mean, that, it's all around us. Paul? Oh, um, I, I live in downtown, I've been there for a little while now, and I don't own a car. Car. I haven't owned a car for a few years now, and uh, in in that I s feel more connected with my surroundings um, now more than before, and uh, yeah, I just really love these old spectacular cinemas in downtown LA, particularly because the buildings are still there. And then I just kind of wanted to see what they looked like with their neon lights still there. I've been kind of on a weird fascination lately of these sort of hodge. It's I guess it's kind of similar to sort of what you're talking about, a little bit similar to what you're talking about, where there's like, um, but I, I I think more like the next stage. In a way, you're talking about the initial stage of like, this is um, we're building this here now. And I like to think about it like, this thing was built a hundred years ago, and it, would, it was built with this in mind, but then there's this, this other building that wanted to be built next to it, and then somebody, you know, hit something with a truck, you know, like they, their truck came in and like nicked it on a certain point, and then now our, all of our architecture and our buildings and things are a hodgepodge of planning and accident and a lot of different things that, and in a way they have this own sort of kind of beauty to it, I guess, so. Uh, do, you raised one moment there, which was like, since you're not in a car, you feel as though you're like closer to the surroundings. And I wanna just, any, each of you sort of talked about that, the need, like sort of like a distancing, like in order for most people to live in Los Angeles, they sort of distance themselves from it in a certain way. And I want to see if either of you want to explore that idea further. I do um, think that, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to tell a story. Um, and um, I was, uh, I think it was in Echo Park, I rode my bike home to um, the Fashion District where I was living for a bit, and uh, 
on the way back, I smelled fire, or I smelled smoke, and then I was, and it was kind of foggy. And then I was looking around, and then I started seeing smoke around, and I could kind of tell the difference between the fog and the smoke. So I, you know, called the fire department, and they came on out. And I was realizing later, I was sort of rationalizing it, that if I was in a car, I would have just driven by and not even known. So to me, I feel like, to me, it's like extremely important, not only for health reasons and a lot of other reasons to ride a bike, but I just, I like this. I like being able to be more connected. It's like I can stop immediately. See, th I feel like I see things better. I feel like I'm interacting with things better. Um, and that... You know, being able to call the fire department because there's a real, literal problem, you know, I don't know, I think, I think there's a lot of importance to that, so. I don't know, I think uh, our, uh, our, our vehicles, our, our built environment, and the, the pace that, that we live our lives around here are ways that we either accidentally and distance ourselves from that that surround us, surrounds us, or sometimes intentionally. You know, they become these these safe safe spaces where we can feel like we are moving and productive. And then we do pass these things that that you're talking about, and you know. And I spent years just on a bike and not in a car. And I I understand like the things that you're talking about you know you you do see more and smell more and structure things differently without that strange security of uh of whether it's buildings or vehicle or schedule or streets and all of that can you tell us what a palimpsest is um a palimpsest is a, uh, a piece of a parchment on which something's been written and then it's been effaced and then written on again and then traces of the initial writing on it. There are hints of it that show through into uh, what's, what's written on it later on. Oh, that's really cool. So any uh, questions or thoughts from all of you as well? I also brought visuals if anybody's interested. What? What sort brought, of visuals? I Please. brought. I got pictures of some because everything I did on mine was as much as possible, histor uh, Like uh, I, I referenced things accurately with historical photographs. Even some of the animation, some things I had to just imagine how certain colors were or animation was. But there were some things where I could get the actual animation. So I just brought some pictures if anybody's interested of. Um, some of the theaters I was... Sure, while you open that up, Kate, tell us a bit about how you made yours, because also, I mean, it didn't look like your normal sort of just shot um, video anything like that. It's a... Uh, I, I shot on Super 8 and hand-processed it, um, and then I transferred to digital because I knew that I wanted to layer things, and I only had the one uh, print, so... Uh, so I... Um, so I, yeah, just ended up layering digitally and finished it digitally. Why was hand processing important to you? Um, hand processing was important to me in this, in this project. Um, the project was about processing this idea of nature in Los Angeles. And since I think a lot of how we understand nature here has to do with control, I wanted to shoot on Super 8 and then hand process to turn over a bit of the control to um, chance, to, to play around with stuff in the dark. With I had never uh, hand processed before and I had someone working with me, um, kind of walking me through this as, as we were making this thing and had no idea if anything was going to gonna turn out and that was part of this project relinquishing some of of the control um, and and so uh, everything ended up ended up showing up and then I worked with it after that but um, but it yeah it was about control is that a commonality for all the field notes for all all of the field notes mm -hmm. everything was hand processed and each one left 
some some things to chance when I went out to to go approach different places and topics and ideas. Why did you call the series film notes? What's the? Uh... Um, I pull those. For, I have a I have a um, background both in biological science, environmental work, um, and art, and so I approach these pieces as kind of a, a hybrid between biological field notes when you're going out to make sense of a space, when you're going out to take notes on the things, describe what it is that you're seeing, um, a hybrid between those and sketches, going out to a, a place to sketch it for the first time. So not looking at a finished scientific paper, not looking at a finished painting, but looking at 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 the idea of processing a space and looking um, as the initial steps that you take to re-see a space. And so I approached this whole series in that way. And yet, and I, got, I got a question actually. Was, is, this, is this your first film? Was this your first one? Um, I mean, I'd shot Super 8 before, uh -huh. but this was my first, um, this series was my first real film series film. on film that I, that I set out to make. Yeah, because I've seen some of your other stuff, and I'm kind of curious about the, like, production of it, because you, a lot of the other, st the stuff that I've seen that, that you've done has, um, uh, seems like there's just, a lot more, um, I guess, people involved, and a lot more, um, a lot more planning. And this felt more, um, uh, yeah, more like a, um, I don't know how to put it, um, but it 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 didn't have as much. Uh, it felt like there weren't there were less people you had to sort of navigate and control. And I'm kind of curious, uh, why was that? Or, or like, was that because you were working on film? Or did, was that not a, dis a part deciding factor of it? Or I, th I think actually, I mean, you're, yeah, I, I think you're, you're onto something there that I do with a lot of my other projects. Um, they're very, very controlled, very scripted, and very planned. Mm. And with this, I, I was making a, with this whole series, I was making a conscious effort to. I had I had I had lived away from Los Angeles for for years and had come back, and this was my one year anniversary of being back, and I did want to. Um, I wanted to re understand the space, and so I did set out to learn more from this project than to impose on the project. And I think a lot of my other work is about imposition of, of idea and story. Mm -hmm. Not that there isn't some here as well, but um, but it was to to listen more to to the space and to, to process that. So it was a, a conscious effort to really um, yeah approach it in that way. Yeah, instead of it felt more personable. Yeah, like yeah, like. You were doing your like, you know, like you were saying, field notes, like kind of like diary, sort of thing. Yeah, it's very cool. So, what was involved in your process then? Um, I, I don't know. I spent at least a year, maybe a little bit more, thinking about it and trying to plan how I was going to do it. And then I got this opportunity at the Echo Park Film Center. Anybody, any filmmakers out there? No, one. Okay, well, if anybody decides to become a filmmaker, um, you should look up the Echo Park Film Center's uh, uh, LA Air Residency. They accept applications in December, I think it is, something like that. And I got the opportunity to work on that residency, and so um, that kind of gave me, that gave me a deadline and it also gave me, you know, a time frame to, to work on things, so I was like, do I want to make this perfectly realistic? Do I want to make it kind of the abstract, more of like what you saw here? And that deadline really made it so I couldn't make it super realistic, which I think is better anyways. Um, and then so I probably spent about three months planning and researching. 
and then just maybe a week or less shooting, and then about a month uh, animating, uh, camera tracking the shots, so like matching <coughs> the moves, so that the animation would be would move with the camera move, which is very technical and slow. Well, I'm curious about the pro the mix of the three. I mean, we have like three different films and sort of three different ways of investigating history of Los Angeles mm -hmm. or different methods. I mean, this is again like a series of sketches or notes or observations that are then done or treated. I mean, not even extent in, in one way. Yours is like an animation. Uh, Forbes's film has these, you know, historical texts, fictional texts that describe the city. Uh, again, like That's an amazing surrealist film. manifesto as well, but again, like layered over long, locked off shots and tracking shots of the city <coughs> as it is at that time. And again, it's like three very, I think, different approaches to try to investigate the layers of the city, and which is why I liked the mix of them all. Because at the same time, I think all of them are dealing with, you know, again, the elements that have been erased. Mm -hmm. I don't know any thoughts or additions on uh, that I comment. I like kept in that last one. I kept uh, trying to figure out where things were, figure out where we were, and trying to remember like what is actually there now. Um, yeah. To me, a lot of it seemed like oddly enough, like it hadn't changed. I mean, downtown. There's so much. I know. There's so the, there was actually one there was one theater that I wanted to include in my piece, the uh, Temple Auditorium Theater, that's just an empty parking lot now. Yeah, actually, I got a picture of it, and they show it in this as they're going down Fifth Street, uh, but you literally only see like the front doors of the building. So, I was sitting there going, "Oh my God, here it comes! Here it comes!" Oh, you can't even see anything. Uh, let's see, I got a. Cool I, I, I remember here. still seeing that first shot. I was like seeing everything. It's like, geez, Dodger Stadium's big. <laughs> um, any other what? Any thoughts or observations from any of you, please? Yes. When did you, they all, because of the lack of color so much in them, too, I think they all sort of do look like they're from the 50s almost. Even though they're contemporary, it, it, the feeling is very older. Um, but also the use of sound, I think, in it. That Kate chose not to use sound, but I think music seems important to her work too and that um, I think Paul was worked with another with a musician or something with your work yeah I'd like to hear more about how you chose to work with him and um, Ali who did the music um, actually he did the entire soundtrack I didn't there's even uh, sound effects in there I had nothing to do with any of that I've worked with him for a few years now um, and so at this point we were pretty informal, um, and I can't remember exactly what I was. I think I was telling him some things that I was listening to and kind of into. But for the most part, I pretty much just trust him. I just say this is my idea. I gave him a couple. Oh no, that's right. He I I'd been toying around with another project that I'm working on, and I used some of his music that he just. Uh, from from previous stuff that he'd been doing, and I just put them together as like a sort of test, like what do you think about this? And then I was like, oh, I want to use music similar to this uh, in this current project. And, and so he. With the uh, street sound or the field recordings. That was totally him. I didn't even ask him to do that. He just put it in there, and it worked perfectly. You know, it's like he just any like I really love his music and I yeah he I just say hey can you do something cool for me and he does it so yeah it's it's great working with him why did you choose to combine like restored theaters with ideas of restored theaters or of past theaters like the Orpheum for example and Broadway Bar which are like current neons? Um, well, most of them had, I mean, I, I had a kind of a bigger list 
when I started, and I was slowly like working them down. I w the thing for me was I wanted to show theaters as they were in as many different decades as I could. I didn't want to overlap any decade. Um, and I chose the Orpheum specifically because uh, of the top of the theater sign. Um, that actually used to have, oh, that used to say vaudeville underneath. And I was like, oh, whoa, I, w I really want to see what that looks like. So I, and actually here it is, this was the reference photograph that I used. And it's a completely, totally obscure image. I think it was from the USC um, archive library, uh, photograph library, whatever they have. Um, and yeah, so I kind of, I kind of just wanted to see the vaudeville part underneath, really. And then I was like, well, I might as well kind of do the rest of the thing because it's spectacular, and it's really well restored. And in a way, you know, I hope that all these theaters, I guess, kind of get to that same point, sort of. Even though I know there's no way the Mason can ever come back, but um, yeah, I guess it's just this longing. Is it a nostalgia or a longing? Please, something. I, don't know. I just I, I thought it was really interesting that uh, the theaters that some of the theaters you, sh you chose to portray also showed up in the the LAX film. I was wondering how you felt about seeing them. That was awesome. <laughs> Although there was no, there was that one shot where it's the what is it, the Roxy and the arcade, and I'm just like, oh, just move like two inches over, because then you'd be able to see the tower, which is in my film, it's the newsreel. So, but of course it didn't move. So I was like, oh. yeah, I'd seen Fabrice's film before, but I hadn't <coughs> seen it with yours, and so I never realized just how many theaters showed up in his film, like seeing yours before. It really like. I, I watched it in a very different way tonight. Yeah, it was my first time seeing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I still love that old painted ball for the Newsreel Theater and Fabrice's film just sitting there across the parking lot, you know, after the theater's mm -hmm. gone. But there's, there's these linkages of these signs that, of course, it, I mean, Tom Anderson's film, Get Out of the Car, links in in the same mm -hmm. way. Just signage will live long past the building. <coughs> well, there's still one for the, uh, the palace. Represents. Yeah, it says... And actually, I, for a while, I thought it was a newsreel, because uh, it says Palace Newsreel Theater, and the palace part is almost completely worn away. It's in downtown, like, right off of Spring. So I was like, oh, hey, it's a sign for the newsreel. And I almost shot it for this piece, and then I was like, oh, wait a second, no, that's the palace. Because it, it said, that it gave the address, and I'm like, that's not the right address. I'm like, oh, oh, it's a different theater. I mean, this is a, a, a linkage as well, of course, to film as well, but just how the signs for things, I mean, literally, of course, last longer than the things themselves, from the street signs, from the neon signs of tops of buildings for businesses, which are long gone, and so forth. Any thoughts on that? Please. Uh, you have the CRA to thank for being able to do, do this at all. Some time ago, they decided to bring back Broadway. And they recognized that motion picture theaters were the most uh, glorified illumination downtown. So they first financed putting a uh, relighting and restructuring a neon sign on the top of a hotel. Uh, and like always, it went over budget. <laughs> they found out that the cost of simply powering a thing was beyond what they wanted to do. So they lit that first, and then they went to bring back Wait, Broadway. What was that? What was the hotel they were going to do? A big pardon? Which which hotel was the sign? It was either on? the Roslyn or the uh, the one which begins with the H. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, it it you could only see it when you were driving west on Fifth Street. Huh. And that was not a lot of uh, traffic. <laughs> Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the movies had Fifth Street going in entirely. Uh, anyway, at any rate, then they had the Bring Back Broadway thing, and they illuminated all the neon signs on all the theaters, chase lights and everything else. And when they began to go out, they left them alone. They did not maintain them, which is what the city always does. Bring in ideas, and then it falls apart. Nobody yeah. deals with uh, uh, allowing it to endure. 
So you have the CRA to thank for having those me on. I've got a million people to thank. <laughs> I didn't. I'm sure I didn't even get all the correct people. I mean, the most of the research that I was able to do was from just a couple websites. You know, if I did this, you know, even ten years earlier, I'd literally have to be. I'd have to probably spend more than a year researching most of what I found. So, yeah. it's a fascinating point to think about about maintenance mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. and how little that is considered really in the construction of things, which is always why. I, you know, interesting structures fall apart anyway. Magnificent things that have been built in LA and then just 30 years later are empty or whatnot because maintenance is always a large uh, cost that nobody ever figures in. And now the CIRA is, uh, what, defunded? <laughs> That's right. right. And it was such a, a, a huge project that there was a, a um, Next to the Fashion Design Center, there was a neon something. It was called Neon Whatever, but oh, they right. located it down there because they thought Museum neon, neon was good. Huh? The Museum, Museum of Neon, neon Art. Yeah. yeah. And they located it down there because neon was coming back. <laughs> and they relocated it. I don't know where they went to, they but went to they left that uh, site down Isn't there. Isn't it in Glendale now? It was on 4th Street for a bit, and not our, yeah, maybe it's in Glendale now. I think they moved to Glendale. Hmm. They'd been planning that move for like two years. They, they were yeah. outgrowing spaces because people kept giving them neon signs because mm -hmm. they couldn't, didn't want them on their buildings anymore. But people sort of came to understand the value of neon and they shouldn't just trash the signs mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. But everybody would just hand them over to the museum and of course the museum couldn't really, can't really just, it's a big warehouse to store yeah. them all in. Um, any other questions or shall we all go uh, get a drink? Any other operations on Los Angeles? Get drunk. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't know if either of you have any other final thoughts. All right, well. I got images if anybody is curious. Yeah, sh so we have a. Uh, I got yeah, some images, proper minutes. images of like the newsreel. Oh, show us one, and then we'll wrap it up on that. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's kind of remarkable to come here to look at the big screen and he's going to show you postcards? <laughs> I know. You should have tapped him into the, as a slideshow. Before the screen. Sorry, I didn't know. Next time we'll do that. Maybe for the before Friday show. Oh, LACMA. Here's a cool one. This is the state. This is the one that's like a whole building. This is literally. I mean, it was. You if you go to uh, what street corner is this? The sixth and Broadway, I think it is. Is it eight? No, it's not eighth. The towers at eighth. The oh, Lowe's yeah, State Theater's at sixth, I think. I think right. Seven. Seven? Anyways, you can still see the little uh, yeah. the things that hold up this sign going all the way up the building. And, you know, if you can't see it now, I can show you later. But they're all still there. Um, all right. Well, please come Friday to LACMA or check out Paul's awesome. pictures with him or Huckleberry's pictures with him up front. And uh, thank you all for coming. And we'll see you all again soon.